r slash ask reddit millennials of reddit what lie were you told growing up that marilyn manson had a rib removed so he could suck his own dong what the duck i got told that too so it's a lie i'm pretty sure every generation has a weird celebrity removed a rib to suck his own dong rumor i think before marilyn manson it was ozzy osbourne or alice cooper that turning on the lights in the car is illegal ah my parents would act like Armageddon was imminent when someone had to turn on the dome light when I was little. And now they sit in the passenger's seat while I'm driving at night and look at their phones with the screen brightness turned all the way up. I will never understand this. My phone brightness is always at the lowest it can be. That some dude is gonna walk up to me and offer me free drugs. Where the duck are my free drugs god damn it a bit. Holy duck my inbox. This is by far the highest rated comment I've had on any account since I've been on reddit. Yep, the D. A. R. E. Program really made me think people were just going to be offering me free drugs. So far I've had to just say no to approximately zero people. I've said no once. Hey man. You wanna hit? No thanks. Was not nearly as dramatic as they made it out to be. I'm still trying to figure out if I'm a millennial or not. Update. I think I'm a millennial. Do you remember? The 11th of September. But not the challenger explosion. Edit. Answering a few FAQs to avoid me getting another thousand replies on this. If you were too young to remember the 11th of September you are generation Z. If you remember the challenger explosion you are generation X. These aren't exact sciences and there is a degree of blending at the edges. For example, if you had a computer in the home in the 80s you are more like a millennial than other people in Gen X who didn't. But for most Americans this is a good line. By remember I mean like 5-6. I mean the event is more personal to you. You remember where you were. And especially in the case of 9-11 you remember the world prior to it. You were aware the world was changing because of 9-11 and those changes shaped you. Generations are cultural, and are different for different countries. You wouldn't call the people who came of age during World War II in Germany their greatest generation would you? So non-Americans have different boundaries. Good examples are remembering your own currency if you are in Europe, and the Berlin Wall. I was born in 1981. Some say I'm a millennial, some say I'm not. My wife just says I'm an a-hole. You'll regret spending so much time on that computer when you're older nope. 6.15 you on that computer too much. Go outside. 15 plus please fix my computer. Why aren't you a millionaire code writer? Duck. It's all I do these days. Way better than sitting in front of a TV and watching commercials all evening. Always check your Halloween candy because someone might have put drugs in there. Drugs are expensive. No one is giving that shit away for free to children. But I still check my kids candy for open wrappers just in case there's any funny business. And Reese's Hups. Edit. Wow that blew up. Thanks for my first gold. I said drugs because there was a post floating around Facebook this past Halloween about this looks like candy but it's really MDMA. But razor blades and the like in candy was around when I was a kid. Just not where I lived. I always toss candy with open wrappers and homemade treats if my kids get them while trick or treating. There's evil people in the world. Also, my bad on the misspelling on the world's best candy. Don't read it while tired. Fun fact. There has never been a single reported incident of strangers poisoning tampering with Halloween candy. The one time it did happen. It turned out to be the parents who poisoned their own child. Edit. HTTPS colon slash slash www snopes com horrors poison halloween as bet it too okay okay i've been corrected i woke up with like 200 replies it does happen but it's rare my mild manner naive staunchly christian x mill once gave some kids a plate of hash brownies or cookies not 100 percent sure which for treat or treat by accident her housemate had left them on the side in the kitchen and x mill got confused and thought they'd been baked for the kids. That was in the mid 70s in the UK and no one appeared to notice their kids were high. But yet, yeah, who would give away expensive drugs to kids who aren't old enough to appreciate them? Edit. Trick or treating did exist in the UK in the 70s even if it wasn't a big deal and done by everyone like it is now. It originated here and then crossed over to the US. Not that that seems logical now. X Mill and Phil. 
who tells this tale regularly to torment his poor mortified wife. Call it guising, to be fair. Which has been a Scottish thing for centuries as far as I know. I don't see a reason for 4x Phil to make this up and she doesn't deny it. You need to define yourself by your job. I wasn't told this directly but we live in a culture of dream jobs or people asking what's your job when they meet you. My work is cool but it's just work. My hobbies are what I define myself around. It's so ingrained. They don't even ask what your job is. They ask you what you do. Like sometimes I play Starcraft. Man. Reminds me of the line from Scott Pilgrim. What do you play? Comma. Referring to his instrument in the band. Ro. Zelda. Tetris. That's kind of a big question. You won't have a calculator everywhere you go. Guess what misses? Diaz. I have a portable computer with access to the internet that fits in the palm of my hand. And I can watch porn on it too. I'm assuming you like to visit Blacked. Com. That receiving participation trophies were our fault. No kid was out there demanding a trophy for losing. Some Dumbass parent thought it would be nice for their kid to get a trophy so somehow this has become normal and everyone claims some 5 year old masterminded the whole thing. My response to this is always who gave us the trophies? Edit. It's a rhetorical question. Guys. Ugh. I had that exchange recently with my aunt when she posted something beachy on social media like. This is what happens when you give every kid a trophy. Comma. She posts shit complaining about millennials all the time. I asked her why she thought millennials were to blame when it was a generation who thought it would be a good idea to give everyone a participation award. She said, wasn't my idea. So I asked her how it felt when people made sweeping generalizations about her entire generation. She removed my comment, but left her post up. You don't need work experience. Grades will be enough. That might have been okay in the past but then the global financial crisis hit and employers became much fussier. Not a single prospective employer I had an interview with gave a shit about my grades. They barely even asked about the degree at all. But they all wanted to know about what I did for my internships. My thesis and why I only lasted 3 months at my first real world job. I think that last one, by far, is probably the biggest red flag. Why did you only last 3 months in your first job? Be loyal to your company. They'll take care of you. Also. Follow your dreams, get a house with a yard, and you'll be able to retire. I hate the loyalty crap. Work your ass off for years and a raise is never in the budget. You prove yourself a reliable competent employee and when a position opens up they'll hire out instead of cross train. The moment things look bleak you'll get laid off because you're not the manager's best friend's brother in laws son despite having more experience and taking a fraction of the sick vacation time. Right. I don't have the link. But there was an article going around here on reddit a while back that showed how you make more money in your career changing jobs every 3 or so years. All guys will only want sex from you all the time. Turns out that kind of thinking is harmful to a young woman's sexual psychological development. Edit to add specify that this also includes the idea that men are always ready to have sex at a moment's notice. And if they aren't, it obviously means there's something wrong with you. Or them. Or they're cheating. Ridiculous. Just because it's anecdotally true for some doesn't mean it's a certainty. It's not healthy for young men either. Where our value was determined by how many women you could score. Especially to those who aren't driven by the need to spit the seed. Need to seed. Most wanted. That I'm smart. I was smart. Sure for a kid. But as I've gotten older that's even out significantly. I may know a lot of trivia and a lot about certain key subjects. But those are not actually marketable skills. So I work nights at a hotel and squeak by. Living with my parents and racking up credit card debt to make ends meet. Edit. A running theme is that about one third of commenters have said I'm dumb because credit card debt. But just because I live with my family does not mean I am free of bills. I buy my own food. I still feel the need to buy gifts for my friends and family around the holidays. And sometimes life is shit and you need to buy tires. So I have $3000 on my credit card I'm trying very hard to pay off. But every time I turn around something happens and it goes right back up. So if you're here to tell me I'm dumb because of my credit card. Go bleach your a-hole you perfect little ducks. 
Bro, this is one of the saddest ones on here and I can definitely relate. People don't realize how damaging it is to tell kids they are smart. I was gifted kid levels smart but didn't realize before it was almost too late that it's not enough to just be smart in this world. You also need to work hard, be born rich or insanely charming. The good news is it's not too late internet buddy. You really can be anything you put your mind to as long as you put the effort in. And I don't mean like on a linear scale. I mean on a painfully non-linear scale that sees almost no return with the first 80% of effort. But if you keep pushing on, with openness and humility to spot those times you're going in the wrong direction, you'll have a great ride wherever you end up. Current education best practice. Praise the quality of the work, not the quality of the kid. This was a good choice not you're so smart. Student loans are normal. Don't be afraid to go into debt for that out of state gradual degree. The very same people who told me not to worry about student loans are now the ones saying people should just work a part time job to pay tuition. I mean, it's not like it's actually doable but they just keep moving those goal posts. I worked full time in school and only covered my cost of living. Tuition is a beach. In Finland, we were told that once the big age group born after World War II retires, there will be jobs everywhere, for everyone. That didn't happen. The number of open positions has remained stagnant for 10 years while the unemployment rate is rising. The same here. These guys don't want to retire, or companies only want temps. In America we call it that generation the baby boomers, and they are too stubborn to retire. Most people on the internet are dangerous weirdos. Most people on the internet are really ducking ordinary people. Ordinary people are weirdos. Never give out your personal information online. Now that's all the internet is. Everyone's personal information. It's better advice now than ever. It's ridiculously easy to see where some random person took a photo. And possibly where they live. Today must be a predator's golden age. Well. Now that Arnold Schwarzenegger is retired, I think predators have a lot less to worry about. That I would need and use cursive. Ha, huh, learning cursive actually turned out to be a problem for me. My default, fast writing is sloppy and half cursive. Half print, my S, T, L, F, and Z are all the cursive versions. And all the letters are strung together, and incredibly hard to read. I have to make a concerted effort to write anything readable. Thanks, Ms. Lucinda, for insisting that I'll totally need to know this and I should just write in it normally. Open bracket. I don't actually remember which grade school teacher taught that. If it wasn't you, Ms. Lucinda, I apologize. In middle school my teachers actually banded together and told me that they didn't want me to use cursive anymore because I had so much trouble reading what I wrote. I haven't written in cursive since I was in the 6th grade which was like 17 years ago because of that. So many movies growing up have people going to college, finishing at like 21, and already being engaged and married immediately after, then within like 2 years of working they're already buying a house with like 3 kids by 25. Like Jesus Christ I'm 26 and just got engaged, only now getting a career in my field, and I'm still living at my parents after living away for like a year. Everything's just so damn expensive and there's just no money to be found. I can't imagine raising kids yet. Yay the living with parents thing is way more socially accepted now, because the struggle is real. People also seem to forget that the living situation is often mutually beneficial. I live with my grandfather, and while he helps me save money by not charging me rent, I help him maintain the house. He doesn't have to worry about not being able to continue living at home at 85, and I can focus on paying more than just interest on my student loans. I'm 27, and yes, I live at home. It hasn't had anything but a positive impact on my life. My grandpa told me the world was in black and white before color TV existed. I'm going to do the same but with resolution. Back in my day we were all 8 bit. Man the girls sure got better looking when we moved up to 16. Be a doctor, lawyer or engineer and you will be happy and make lots of money. I know so many underemployed lawyers that it's a little depressing. I don't know a single MD that isn't divorced. Although I know a lot of happy dudes, I do know a lot of happy, wealthy engineers though. People like to tell you what's popular at the time not looking into the future. 2000. 
join a docum shit 2005, become a lawyer shit 2010, become a petroleum engineer shit now join a docum. Now it's all about cryptocurrency man, it's easy. That going to college meant you could get a job. Also that you even needed to go to college. Growing up we were always taught that you had to go to college to be successful, but that turned out to be a complete lie. Go to college to avoid working in McDonald's. I know you have a degree but you should consider yourself lucky to be working in McDonald's. That they had it so much harder than us growing up. We're meant to be the first generation in a very long time that is poorer than their parents. It's kinda crazy to think about this. My parents for example. Dad paid cash for a house when he was 26 paid cash for all his vehicles until the late 90s. These were new vehicles from a dealership. Supported a family of 6 on $60,000 a year and put money in savings my mom paid her own way through college and graduate school by working everything's just way more expensive now. Go to college. I'll pay for it. My $39,000 debt says otherwise. All my childhood. Go to a state school and we'll pay for it. Right before college. Well we can't pay for it but we'll pay off the interest while it's accruing and you're in school. Graduation. Yeah, we didn't do any of that. I try not to expect people will just give me money but if they say over and over that they will it's hard not to expect it. This. My parents did the we will help you with college. Yep, they decided that they wanted to buy a RV instead. Edit. I am going to edit both of my posts since I seem to be getting attacked on this. First, my mom has no idea what myself or my husband make. She's making a blanket statement. Second, I graduated and was paying back my student loans long before I was married. I was making $12. 50 per hour with a MBA because the job market was for shit here in Detroit. I did reduced payments and got myself through the madness until the job market picked up and I found something worth a shit. Yes, that's right. I was an adult and didn't ask for financial help or expect anything from anyone. Third, for those of you who are talking shit and thinking that I am whining about paying my student loans, you're mistaken. It's my debt. I made my bed. And I lay in it. No use in crying over spilled milk. I pay my loans. And have a very nice lifestyle. I am very fortunate. But I am also frugal. Which is where my mom's comments come into play. A perfect example is why I refuse to pay to board my dogs to go on vacations or weekend getaways. We don't vacation because I won't board my dogs. It is expensive. And I don't want to leave them like that. My husband. Myself. My kids. Or my family do not go without. We just choose to spend money on important things. Second edit. Last. My issue was this. My parents offered to pay. I never asked. When I brought them home the paperwork from the financial aid office. They told me they decided they were going to finance an RV instead. I had to drop out of my first semester of college because of this and resume my start the following year. While I never expected anything from them. It was the fact that they waited until the last minutes to tell me. So what I thought I had figured out. Starting school. And working reduced hours at work because of my school schedule. Was completely changed last minute. That if I don't have my life figured out by the time I'm 25 then I have some serious problems. This gives me anxiety to this day. As a 28 year old. I have this inherent anxiousness about my life creeping up in age and not knowing how the duck I'm going to survive the years to come. My mom told me to plan to take care of her when she got old. Because she wouldn't have retirement money saved up. She died before I was out of the house. Most everything else was great advice though. Get good grades. Because we can't afford to pay for your college. Don't marry the first guy who asks. Just because you're afraid no one else will. I think the second part of that last statement was good. But I'm happy my wife said yes to me. The first guy who asked. Money doesn't buy happiness. Sorry folks. But in the world I'm currently living in. It absolutely does. There was actually a study I read a while ago about how much money will buy happiness and if I remember right it's somewhere in the $60.80.000 salary range. So money certainly does equal happiness. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.